attitude is a choice. Yes. But also we have to become self-aware. And Fair. I mm-hmm. spent most of my life not being self-aware. Not being self-aware of how I felt physically with the foods I put in my body mm-hmm. um, and with my emotions. And then I feel like since becoming an entrepreneur and really studying self-help and self-discipline, I have become so much more self-aware. And, and I love it. Without Fear, of Her Future podcast is for women who are passionately pursuing financial freedom using multiple streams of income and real estate to accomplish their goals. We are here to empower you to be brave, dream big, and design a life that you love that inspires others to do the same. I'm Teresa Todd, founder of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and author of the book, Without Fear of Her Future. And I'm Melissa Baker, your other co-host. I'm a real estate investor and fitness coach specializing in turning properties from drab to fab. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to help motivate and inspire you to build your dream life because girl, you deserve it. Yes. Today, we're going to be talking about how your attitude guides the trajectory of your success. We know it's not always easy to remain positive, but there are things that we do as real estate investors and also just as women. Um, How can we recenter our mindset to think positively and find the silver lining in most situations? You'll be blown away at how much happier and content you'll feel when you choose a positive attitude. But trust me, it's a decision that is consciously made. So, Teresa, we both believe that having a positive attitude is everything. So let's chat for a moment about why it's so important. Well, attitude, you just said it, does affect everything. It affects our business, our relationships, our family, our faith. Everything that we do and think, our attitude affects it. It does. Yeah. If you've got a bad attitude, then we tend to say things that we might not mean or that don't need to be said. Um, then we're backtracking, right? And nothing, nothing, it doesn't push us forward at all. Whereas yes. a positive attitude can definitely um, set things in a forward motion I for agree. us. I yeah. agree. And we both love to grow both professionally and um, personally. So let's talk a little bit about how to let professional or work stress not overpower uh, and ruin our day. Well, I think that comes down to boundaries, really. I think that we really have to have some boundaries with work, with our business mm-hmm. um, and our family, because there, there's a balance that has to, for me anyway, I know has to happen. I, I need that time with my with my family, with my husband, with my kids, um, even just having downtime at home to unwind is so important to keep my attitude in check, you know, and not have that bad attitude with, with things that the stressors that come with the day, because there's a lot of stressors that come with what we do. (laughs) (laughs) There is, there is. And I think, um, making sure like you're just saying with boundaries, but making sure that there's time for fun, there's time for laughter, there's time for a nap, or there's time for like whatever downtime is a hobby, um, whatever that is for us, because we can get into a role of just work, 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 work. And it is going to affect our attitude. There's not, there's not anything you can yes, stop it yes. if we don't work those things. And most in. people have um, an uncomfortable moment that they can think of and think or think back to when they probably didn't shine their brightest or act with the grace that they usually carry themselves with. Uh, and that's one reason we have to really think about our attitude when interacting with other people. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Melissa uh, knows this story. That's why she asked me this question. I literally, yes, I just literally had a meltdown uh, with one of my contractors that I'm not proud of and at all. Um, and that I certainly didn't shine my brightest. And it was because I just let things mount up mm-hmm. until I, I found myself with a bad attitude. And then I spewed it all out. Then I had to go back and apologize and um, reword all the things. And so, yeah, I think if I had recognized my attitude and handled it way before I let it get to that point, uh, I would not have been embarrassed by my actions. And then especially if that becomes who we are, because, you know, I mean, I, I don't think that's who I am. I think it's what I did, you know, on a rare occasion. Right. But humbling yourself with an apology and correcting <laughs> yourself, uh, that's part of attitude as well. It is part of the attitude. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. And it, but it really brought things back to my own self. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, yeah. why did you, what, what prompted you yeah. to get yeah. a little bit crazy <laughs> with your contractor? Oh, uh, and, you know, talking about that, 
we do have to protect our energy against other people's negative attitudes yeah. because sometimes we let other people's attitudes affect us. So how do you combat thinking about the sort of thing when someone is around you that's being less nice or mm-hmm. they just have a negative attitude? How do we uh, avoid letting that affect us? You know, honestly, for me, I, I, I've, I've had moments where I've just had to separate myself from that. And even though it, it might be people that you love um, or circumstances that you you know need to be involved in, sometimes you just have to step away. Um, I remember just to come up with an example of, of this back when I was um, having my first baby and I was determined to have her naturally. I had a birthing center with a midwife. I wanted to completely experience everything that God intended my body to experience in childbirth, which I know sounds crazy, but I really <laughs> did. And so I chose to go to this birthing center and he's, and I um, had some friends and family that were not supportive of that at all. And they made their opinions known and, and almost in a, to try to scare me, like you need to be at a hospital. What if yeah. this happens? What if that? And I literally just had to put up that boundary and say, you're not welcome at the birth of my baby. Yes. <laughs> it was hard because yeah. these are people I loved. Um, but I couldn't, especially in that situation, I, I couldn't deal with the negative attitudes. And, you know, just to finish the story, both of my births were beautiful experiences. Yes. Praise yeah. the Lord. I agree. I agree. And that goes back to the boundaries is yeah. literally, especially when we know that we want to go forth with something, whether yes, it's a business, yes. starting a real estate business. There's so many people that would question that. Oh, the, it's not the right time. The economy, who do you think you are that you right. can do this? All oh, of you're things. so right. And we have to not let all of that negativity affect us. And I cannot help but also think about um, just media. There's so oh, much yeah. fear. Uh, you know, everybody's talking about all the bad things in the world. And if we spend too much time even listening to the news or just taking all that negativity in, yes. it's going to affect our attitude. I literally have to shut it down. Or even something that I will do is I'll talk back to it. Like yeah. in the radio or on the TV, when I'm hearing negativity, I'm talking back to it. I'm like, not for me. You know, yeah, yeah. All, you know, because if not, we, we will be petrified, we'll be filled with fear, anxiety, constantly Absolutely. worrying. Absolutely. So we have to we really have to make a decision to fight against a negative attitude. We do. We do. It's not always easy. Well, someone once said to me uh, that if you're having a bad day, that you cannot sing <laughs> and be in a bad mood mm-hmm. at the same time. What do you what do you think about that? I think that is totally true. (laughs) I know for me, music is a huge, I'm not a singer. I'm I'm not musically inclined, but I love music. I'm the one that I get up in the morning and I, I, you know, listen to some praise and worship as I go into my, into my morning, my quiet time. And when I'm in the car, um, I, I, I know a lot of people listen to talk radio and they love that stuff, but I have to have the praise and worship on. And I am that woman driving down the road, driving and, and praising at the same time um, <laughs> as loud as I can. Yeah. And, and it is you can't be in a bad mood. You are so right. And especially with worship music, yeah. because when you're singing along with those words, it's getting on the inside of you and it's stirring up your faith. And you're, and man, I agree. It totally transforms your spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah. so powerful. So yeah. powerful. Singing, obviously, as well as just um, surrounding yourself with other positive people. And going back to what you were talking about earlier and not, I mean, there's obviously going to be negative people that we have to be around, but we can limit how much time we spend with we those kinds of people. We can. And yeah, I agree. Uh, gratitude and worship. Mm-hmm. Are going to if you're struggling with a bad attitude, those are two things yeah. that you can really. Yeah, and if you're struggling, those are two things that you can do. If you have, if you're around other people that are struggling, that negative energy. If you've got the positive energy, right, you're in a good mood, yeah. and you're around those that don't. Um, those are things that you can do to help improve help. maybe their their Absolutely. attitude. Absolutely. Right? So let's talk a little bit about what we can do when we're feeling that stressed or that overwhelmed, those feelings that bring on the negative attitudes. Yeah. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you the very first thing that I do is go straight to prayer. Yeah. I mean, even under my breath, if I'm getting a bad report, if there's something going, you know, somebody says something mm-hmm. immediately, even under my breath, I am immediately, I begin to pray and just say, okay, God, help me ha- give me wisdom to handle this. Give me grace to handle this right. or Lord, just, okay. 
if I'm feeling the anxiety and fear, just to really pray. And then the second thing I'm going to do is go to the word of God. Uh, and I'm so thankful. I learned that at a really young age, if whatever's going on, if I am feeling anything, the first thing I'm going to do is pray. The second thing I do is I'm going to go to the Bible and say, okay, God, give me wisdom. Give me some insight on this. And you know, it's so amazing because he's so faithful. You will open up the word of God. And there is a scripture that jumps out at you that tells you that it'll just speak to the situation. Mm -hmm. And maybe your circumstances doesn't, don't change immediately, but you have a promise from the word of God. Well, and that brings it into perspective, which yes. is a lot of times what our attitude is, is just our own perspective of things. And sometimes when our perspectives are off, it takes getting into prayer, getting into the word of the Lord to, yes. to really get our perspective back where it needs to be. Yes. And when you take a step back, take that breath, pray, mm-hmm. read a little bit, seek the Lord, yep. you get a new perspective, Yes, which can totally change an attitude. Yes, yes, yes. One of the things that I have learned to say to myself when I find myself either complaining or feeling negative about any situation is to say to myself, this is really a first world problem. You know, just to put that into perspective, like well, this thing that you're whining about, complaining about this negative attitude, there are so many people with so many worse problems. Yeah. Is this even any, and then it, it almost, it immediately brings it back into perspective of, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous yes. to get myself <laughs> wound up about this thing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, I, I love that. Yeah. I think it's also important uh, when we're feeling those overwhelmed and stressed feelings is to have someone who is kind of on that same page with us that we can trust, kind of a confidant that you can can contact and, and call or talk to, you know, a friend. Yes. Um, involve them because I think there are attitudes a lot of times I know mine just relationships in general um, whether it's a phone call to my husband um, one of my children or a friend Mm -hmm. just to get me out of that and again to reset my mind yes is is important Uh, yeah I agree and I am definitely someone that whenever I am stressed or in a situation talking through it Mm -hmm. helps me that's like therapy to me I always say sometimes I didn't even know how I felt about something till I said it out loud and then I'm like that is how I feel about that thing. <laughs> um, because it, just talking it out, it, again, brings it into perspective mm-hmm. sometimes. You realize sometimes, oh, this is more important than I thought it was, or, it's not. or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, I can't even believe I'm a little embarrassed that I just said those words out loud. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that happens to us, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Okay, I think another thing when we're talking about attitude is to recognize what what are some of our stressors? I know that all of us have different things that really can stress us out. And if we recognize what those things are, well, we can work to avoid it, but also just know that sometimes those things are going to happen and there's nothing we can do about it, but recognizing it so we can work. So do you have a, like something that you really do? I've I've actually got two. I've got a business one and a personal one. So, So from the business perspective, for me, um, most of what I've done has been flipping And the money, the financing, um, when it comes time, you know, where we're close, getting close to the end, right. And we've, we've spent the budget and it's getting time for me to pay back my lender that that gets really stressful. If if the project's not on course or if we've delayed for whatever reason, or we've gone over budget, I get really stressed, um, about the money and that can really affect my attitude towards it. So I really have to take a step back and personally, um, with kids, my kids, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I I don't know if all the moms on here track (laughs) their kids, but mine are 19 and 21 and I still track them. And if they, you know, I like to look where they are in the evenings just to make sure they're home safe. And, uh, you know, if they're not, I tend to worry a little bit, which turns me straight to prayer because Lord, all I can do is pray over them at this point. So, but that can tend to to stress me if they're not where they're supposed to be or where I think they ought to be. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I don't think that ever stops with our kids. What about you? What what stresses you, Teresa? Well, this is something that I just recognize lately is, so I have, I live by a time block. I -hmm. mean, I live by a time block. And so I love to look the night before at what my calendar is for the next day. And I think it through and I have a plan for it. I know exactly how long it takes me to drive from, I mean, like I have it planned out. So I do the same thing. I look at it again that next morning. And whenever I'm midway through it and somebody like throws something extra Mm -hmm. in, I get that phone call that says, oh, can you do this? Or somebody's going to be, you know, my contractor is going to be late or better. I will find that that throws me into a tizzy yeah. because I'm like, oh, this is going to screw up the rest of my day because I'm living by this time block. But I just recently recognized that, that I feel that anxiety 
And just by recognizing it now, when it happens, I'm like, okay, there's not anything that I can do about this. This right. is just life. So I, again, it's talking to myself and putting it into perspective <laughs> yeah, and saying, yeah. okay, um, what am I going to have to either scratch off of this, de- mm. the, you know, of the time block of the calendar today, or I just need to make a phone call and somebody know I'm going to be late, right. but just like recognizing it and then not allowing it to make me anxious, right. but to go, okay, this has happened and I'm going to deal with this. So it comes to a choice of a how choice. you handle that. And you know yeah. what? Everything that we're really talking about, about attitude really comes down to a choice. Yeah. It really does. It does. It does. Having a positive attitude. Go right, ahead. Yeah. It's hard for most yeah. people to have constantly because we are constantly mm-hmm. dealing with stressful situations, but it is a daily practice. It is. It is because we let our feelings, a lot of times we let our feelings control us and where our feelings, um, what is it? We have to act our way into feeling, right? Our feelings, we can't let them control us. And yes. sometimes we have to do a lot of things that we don't feel like doing. Um, but I think it comes, that comes to when you're not feeling, you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed that you have to act your way into not feeling that way, I suppose, you know, yeah. it's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice. Yeah. You had uh, mentioned this, uh, even working out, like, mm-hmm. we don't feel like who really feels like going to the gym. And going to work out. But once uh, I find I'm literally even five minutes into it, I feel better. Yeah. But especially when it's over, you feel for great. sure. You feel great. So if we just let our feelings affect everything that we do in life, oh, we're going to we're not going to be um, successful, probably in yeah. any of the things that we want to be successful. In. Well, and going going along with that, tell me really quickly mm-hmm. with your workouts and your beginning workouts, your attitude towards them, getting started, where is your attitude now compared to where it was when you started? Oh my gosh. I know the results I'm going to get now. Yeah. So it, I already have a better attitude about working out. Yeah. I never dread it. I never dread it. And I am a little bit rare in that because I like thrive. I, mm-hmm. I get excited about, but still there's days. Like, and, and listen, I have a gym in my house. So all it is, is marching up no the stairs. No excuses, girl. No <laughs> excuses. I get a lie. Sometimes I'm marching up those stairs going, oh God, you know, I'm not really, you know, just not looking forward to it, but I love the results. Yeah. And so that's what drives me. And so, so many times, and I think that's, it's not just working out, but once we, find the results. Once we start seeing the results in, in flipping a house or yeah, we start yeah. anything that we do that we're scared of, that we might have a bad attitude about once we do it and we start, mm-hmm. we begin to see the results. Well, then we dread it less and we begin to get a little more excited about it. And we just crush, we just squash that negative attitude about it because we're like, no, this is going to make me money. Yes. This is going to cause me to succeed. This is going to make me feel better, whatever it is. That's why I love the the stories that we read in the network of the women that are uh, a lot of the wholesalers are the ones that are actually out there talking to the homeowners who are distressed, who are in situations that they need to get out of. I yes. love those stories of how they literally changed the life of a homeowner, got someone out of foreclosure, kept somebody out of bankruptcy. I love those I stories do too. They are very empowering, I think, and then help get a better attitude about what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing. Yes. I love yes. those. Creating love those. win-wins with everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Love yes. It. Love yes. It. Love it. Love it. Um, so all of us get into a funk at times, right? So what, what do you do when you find yourself in a funk besides work out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love this question. Um, I don't get into a funk often, but and when by I, a funk, let's just determine, okay. define this by a funk. I'm not meaning just a bad mood. Like we're right. talking a few days. Yes. Uh, oh, I just don't feel like doing the things I Yes. I, I mean, I, I, it's when, so I have found myself like it's two or three days. Maybe it can even go into weeks yeah. of just like, and, and I think funk is the only word I know. It's like, ah, I'm not sick. I don't really, I don't even know what's wrong. Mm-hmm. I just don't feel excited. I don't feel, I'm not filled with joy. Yeah. And, um, I think number one is recognizing it, which, oh, yes. so in my That's four cool. days, I would have never recognized it. I would have just, you know, I would Had have your not, pity party. Yeah. <laughs> so I think number one is recognizing. Mm-hmm. And then this is what I'll do. I'll ask myself and I'll just even pray. I'm like, okay, God, why am I feeling this yeah. way? What's going on? And asking him and then, and, you know, even asking yourself immediately, usually, if you think a minute, you can figure out why you feel that way. Right. Sometimes it's something that somebody said to you three days before. 
it's it's something that um you know, something that you experienced, something that just affected you right. more than what you really realized. Or maybe you were, you know, you had an expectation of something and you're disappointed wow. about it and you haven't really processed it, right. but it's affecting your attitude and you're feeling, you know, in a funk. And again, the minute that you recognize it, now you can deal with it. Exactly. Now you can talk. And for me, it's talking myself out of it. It's, oh, Okay. Yeah. I'm really disappointed about that situation. I was hoping for this and this is what happened Mm -hmm. or so-and-so hurt my feelings when they said that thing. And, um, and then just processing that. And I think we can pull ourselves out of that funk. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't always happen overnight, but no, yeah, I agree with you recognizing it so that you can move forward through it and figuring out what that root is, like why, why you're feeling that way. Yeah. And, you know, to really sum up so much of what we're talking about, Attitude is a choice, yes. but also we have to become self-aware. And Very, I mm-hmm. spent most of my life not being self-aware, not being self-aware of how I felt physically with the foods I put in my body mm-hmm. um, and with my emotions. And then I feel like since becoming an entrepreneur and really studying self-help and self-discipline, I have become so much more self-aware. And and I love it because what it really tells us when we learn that is that we can control so much more than we think we can. We're not yes. just victims of our feelings. Right. Very true. Very true. So, Teresa, we usually, when we have guests on the show, we usually ask for three takeaways um, to give. What three things would you advise our investors, our listeners, entrepreneurs who are looking to be brave and to grow or maybe they're feeling stuck somehow? What are three things that you would have them take away from this? Oh, well, first of all, choose your attitude. Yes. We are not victims to our attitude. We get to choose it. Our spouses, our friends, our family, our coworkers, nobody gets to choose it for us. We can choose to be happy. We can choose to forgive. We can choose to be angry or not to be angry. So I, I believe that is number one. Um, and then something that you said is act your way into feeling something just because you'll feel like doing something you just do the motions of it and then your feelings will come alongside us and then um third is begin to become self-aware and recognize your attitude yeah really recognizing it that is important yeah well i've loved this conversation i love talking about attitude it reminds me just this conversation was good for me today to think about my attitude yes So, Melissa, to wrap up, let's issue a challenge to our listeners. What would you challenge them to do to move forward powerfully in their life or their business this week? I think for them to determine or recognize what it is that they can do to turn their attitude around when they have a bad attitude or when they're faced with that. Find that thing like we were talking earlier, yours is prayer, going into the Bible, reading, um, those kinds of things, you know, that can, can really turn our attitude around. What is the thing that you can do? Determine it and figure yes. it out so that you've got it and you know what you can do when. Absolutely. When For it. yours, singing, just yeah, turning on that singing. praise That's and worship. Right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It sure is. It is. Well, this was so much fun, Melissa. And ladies, if you have not subscribed to Without Fear of Her Future podcast, hit that subscribe button today for new episode reminders. And please leave us a review on our podcast page. Thank you for joining us today. On behalf of the Women's Real Estate Investors Network and Teresa Todd, I'm Melissa Baker, encouraging you to be brave and dream big.